Hey guys, it's, uh, Joe and Isaiah from the Automator, and we were uh, Isaiah was helping us because we're creating this new Udemy course, and uh, we were automating because it's a painful process to upload, upload these files. So Isaiah was working on a, on a way to automate it, and he's like, "Hey, I I got hung up on this one spot where it's really crazy. Like IE just freezes and auto hockey, and I can't do a darn thing." And I'm like, "Yeah, I, I'm actually familiar okay. with that one. Okay. Um, I've run into it. It's and it's the first time you run into it. It's really crazy because you're like, yes. well." Hey, I'll just do a set timer, right? Like I'll just use a set. That's the easy my go-to. Like, oh, I'll just have a set timer, take care of this. It doesn't work either, right? You get stuck on right. it. Now, for those of you who might have seen the 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 webinar we did with Hotkey it on Auto Hotkey H, mm -hmm. he demonstrated because Auto Hotkey H is not single threaded, it can handle multi-threaded stuff. You don't have this issue. And that's what it boils down to is that Auto Hotkey is a single threaded technology. Uh, uh yeah, uh program yeah. like yes, it is. Now, what, what we're going to show here is a, a little bit of the example of the problem and then how we came up with this. Well, we, we borrowed a solution, uh, but it's, right. a really, it's a very specific solution for an IE window doing this with a dialog box. Um, now, you, the, another way we could have solved this was to, before we had clicked the button in the script freezing, to have launched a different instance of AutoHotKey to be watching for that window and then take care of it and come back in, right? That's, that's a... a an yeah. Awkward? So yeah, it, it well, no, it's not awkward, but but let let let's talk about it. So basically, my uh, my approach, and let me let me just go ahead and show you real quick um, what I have here. And here's the deal: as I am a person who have been um, working mainly with GUIs and stuff like that, and I really rarely work with Internet Explorer. So there are some a few things in here that I am kind of like, okay. Joe, do you know about this? And you are like, I have worked in Internet Explorer for a long time. Yes, I know. Like, I have seen that one. Uh, so that's good. You know, that's, that's one of the things that I do want to point out. It's always good to ask somebody else, even if you think you know more, because you don't know everything, right? So um, basically, we are creating um, a web browser control. And we are going to be selecting some files and sending them. Now, here, there's a little part where I try to click on a file upload control on the web page, right? Now I have document query selector, click on it, and then I'm gonna wait for the window to come up and then send whatever you selected as your file and hit enter. That's the idea. And it's a very simple idea. Now, when you go ahead and run the script, so I'm here. I hit F12, it's gonna ask me for the file. I'm gonna hit open. It's gonna go ahead through the process of doing this. And now in this particular instance, I was expecting this to be filled out and that we hit enter because the script, that's what it's trying to do. But it stopped there and I'm like, okay, hold on. And this, the part that I like to show is how you can you reach to a conclusion like what is going on? You open the script and you take a look at the last executed line and what i see is that line 62 is the last executed line on my script and that's where it stopped so when i go back to my script line 62 is whenever i clicked and nothing else is getting executed so that's where it stopped and i'm like okay so what happened why did it stop there okay so if it is stopping there let me try and figure it out outside of that so that's when I tried with a set timer and added a, 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 um, a little uh, label down here. So that set timer, I set it off before clicking this line. And that's when Joe says like, nope, that's not gonna work. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, so here's the thing. Why wouldn't it work? And the reason for it is as we were discussing, Joe, Auto Hotkey is single, single threaded, even though uh, you can kind of like fake multiple threads with a set timer, it is still single threaded. And what happens is that when you open a file dialog, that thread gets locked. And when it's locked, no other threads are gonna be fired but, up. Correct me if I'm wrong. The, the, mm -hmm. the thing is it gets locked because IE now has the focus, has, is that right? Next. Well, that's something that I cannot say that it is because IE has the focus, the focus, because what I would understand is that I opened that dialogue, but the problem is that that dialogue is not a child of my script. It's a child of 
uh, IE. And what happens is that now my script locks waiting for them to finish because it's not my it's not my window it's your window wait finish with it and then when you finish then i will continue with whatever i was doing you know it kind of reminds me in uh what, what's the command um the the wait for the dos prompt right the run wait right like, the run wait yeah. yeah is it it tells it to go but don't do anything but until don't do anything yeah. until it reaches back to me right so that's basically what's happening and the fact that auto hotkey in this case is not the owner of this window and you can see it because here at the top you will see that it says choose file to upload and it has this little ie icon in it so the the parent of this window is ie and so long as this is open the script is kind of like waiting for it to finish so uh we came up well we we went on the internet and looked for uh what we you know, what can we do about it? Because you had an answer, but we couldn't find it really quickly. Mm -hmm. So what we did is that we used this other option. And this is the part where it becomes kind of like interesting to me. The fact is that uh, the solution to this, the simple solution to it, because maybe that you have different solutions, is to instead of using the object like this, which I was just using the browser object, it's an, a browser object, and querying the selector directly from my object like this, what you uh, what we found is that you can use the navigate function to execute JavaScript's command on the window. I understand that, which is um, interesting because I, I'm still sending the JavaScript through the browser object, but the fact that I'm doing it through that function kind of like changes everything. And I'm not, I cannot explain exactly why, why this changes everything. But the fact is that then it seems to be that auto hotkey then is not waiting for that window any longer, right? In my, like you, like I'm guessing, right? My thought is that now JavaScript is the one that did the run wait. Give me a right? second, please. Not auto hotkey. Give, give, give me a second, please. Yep. Dígame lo mami. Okay, so yeah, so I, I think it's the, the JavaScript did the run wait, right? Not auto hotkey. Kind of. That's why auto hotkey can can still function. I would I would I would say I would I would really think that because JavaScript has this kind of like promise kind of things. And whenever you open a, a dialogue, you have the promise of that window finishing. And the one who is waiting for that promise is IE, the JavaScript that we just run, not auto hotkey. That's one way of uh, of putting it now right now if i hit f12 i select my file and now the script is going to go ahead and do everything and it is going to select the file normally as it should which is kind of like this is very interesting if you're having this kind of issues especially if you're trying to automate ie i would say that using the navigate function to open dialogues is your best friend <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna save a lot of time with that um because again as we we're saying it's it looks like javascript is the one that keeps waiting for the dialogue instead of auto hotkey that's the one thing and, and to clarify this this would be for an open or a save dialogue right it doesn't yes it doesn't yeah matter. it is it is child dialogues is uh so children of the main uh so those are dialogues that are owned by the main window in this case they're owned by ie that's what happens so cool. yeah, it seems to me that this is kind of like the the a good solution to have around there if people are having issues with these kind of things. Uh, now, then yeah, just go ahead and do that. To, um, to be fair, we, we there was another solution, and actually Maestrit and I had worked through one before, uh, and I know Jeezwig has one on the forum on using the ACC library getting around to it, but it was much more complex, and this was so easy. I should listen to this. Now we the were, reason why I want to mention the ACC one is because. This solution works great for IE. However, you could definitely run into this issue, issue in other programs. Yes. Right. And, and, and by the library. way, we were, we were actually testing it with the ACC library. We were actually loading it and doing everything. But in a one line piece of right. code, you yeah. can actually solve it. Done. So yeah, let's go ahead and go with yeah. that one, right? <laughs> but yeah, it is true. Um, there are many other ways of doing it. And probably this one only works in IE because we're actually passing just JavaScript to IE. But in any other program that you might not be able to pass JavaScript or something like that, 
Um, the only thing that you have to keep in mind is that it is possible, probably using the IACC library or um, with any other methods that you have available. On well, that yeah, and, and so another simple one, before this, we could have launched a script waiting to look for an active window and when it pops up, do something with it. And then when it's done, it ends, exits. Itself. Right. So basically, that, basically yeah. Solution. So, so this, this little part here, which we have like a, a while that is waiting right. for a window specifically. And right. when it finds it, then just go ahead and send something to it. I could have had that in a different uh, script that it's running all the time. Right. And well, the only thing that's it, right? that would have been a little complex about it is we would have probably wanted to have passed a variable to it. That's right. the so, issue. That's, yeah. that's where it gets kind of like messy. It's a little more complex. but we, it, it, it is going to get messy because now your main script should be able to pass the variable of the right. current file to the running script. And of course, you can do it using messages and stuff. But that's There's something that, ways, right? yeah, so that, that's something that then it creates a lot of complexity. When yeah, you see one liner solves the issue, you know, like. Right. Exactly, right. Yeah. What I would have done, you know, if I hadn't had the solution was probably instead of having it run all the time, I would have triggered it to run right before this to pass that parameter, the name of the file probably to it, okay. and then just have it, exit. once it finds it, it, it does it and exits itself out. And that way I don't and have to worry time, about it. Yeah. It's always running. That's a very good, that's a very good way of doing it. You know, so in any case, that's the, the, the main idea, how you could go ahead and uh, solve this particular issue. Right. And the fact that you have many ways of doing it, you, you have always, uh, multiple ways of doing the same thing, right? And this is also a really interesting point of how set timer for the most part is a great way to simulate multi-threading, but it doesn't actually give you multi-threading. No, exactly. Yes, that's right. Even though, and and logic tells me like, I set the timer before clicking. Right. So basically right. that timer should start running before that. It still won't do what it, what you think it's going to do. So yeah, it does once, it, and it probably might even do it once, right? But the second think, it gets into that other one, it's like that actually, run. Wait, let, let's let's just test that real quick. So basically, what I could do is just set the timer, right? And I am just going to set the code to break right there and see if that code gets executed at least once. That's it. So I'm just going to press the F12 and see if my script breaks right there. So if I press F12, select. So no, I don't see that. I don't see that my script actually broke there. So again, we are in, in a situation at, and I'm not sure. Oh, now, now you see that it broke. So when I close the, the IE window, it broke. Now let's go ahead and do something. Let me leap for 500 here before I click to see if that if that helps out. So as you can see here, uh, the line is going to get yellow if we reach that line. Mm. That's the only thing that is, that's what I'm waiting for. So I hit F12. There it is. Now it broke. So I know that it's now waiting for that script. So um, if I keep waiting for it, so now let's go ahead and try that. So I know that it is reaching there. So let's go ahead and try and see if the solution with the with the um, with the set timer might work because my my intuition tells me that it should. Because now I'm waiting for that script. Let's see. Now it is should be waiting for it. Ah, no. You know what? <laughs> now we're in that loop. We're in an infinite loop right now. So if I pause my script, now I'm in the. I'm in that loop because right. that window is not there. So I cannot do that because now I enter into this loop. Um, and while it's in that loop, then the other part is not going to get executed at any point. So if maybe with two timers. But again, we're getting into more complex just to solve right. something that in the yeah, end, you, you already have a solution for it, right? So yeah, I think that's the best this is the best approach in this particular yeah. case. And yeah, it's good to actually test those things and see how it goes, right? Absolutely. Awesome. Thanks, yeah. man. You're welcome.